It was a bruising race and a narrow victory. British Columbia has elected its first minority government since 1952, keeping Christy Clark's liberals at the helm. Joining us now on the new political reality for that province, Nelson Wiseman, professor of political science and director of the Canadian Studies program at the University of Toronto. And it's so good to see you again. Thank you. You've been coming to these parts for a couple of decades okay. now, helping us out from time to time. Uh, let's just play a little tape from election night, shall we? Uh, the Liberal Premier Christy Clark, the NDP leader John Horgan, the Green leader Andrew Weaver, and guess what? They all claim victory. Roll it, Sheldon. Here we go. We won the popular vote. <laughs> but British Columbians did tell us tonight that they want us to do some things differently. They want us to work together. They want us to work across party lines. British Columbians have waited 16 years for a government that works for them. And we're going to have to ask you to wait a little bit longer <laughs> until all the votes are counted. This is what we do know. A majority of British Columbians voted for a new government, and I believe that's what they deserve. We're here to work with anybody. I, I see no reason why it can't last a full term. I don't, BC Greens know how to work with people and compromise. We're not into it for political gain. We're in this to ensure that good policy is put forward. Well, it wasn't exactly a tie, but it was awful darn close to a tie. And Sheldon, if you would, let's bring up the election results. Uh, as we know them now, there are still ballots to be heard from. But essentially, on election night, the Liberals got just shy of 41% of the total votes cast, good for 43 seats. 44 is a majority, so they're one short. The NDP, you can see, just, just shy of 40% of the total votes cast, good for 41 seats. And there's the Greens with uh, almost 17% of the total votes cast, good for three seats, which at the moment holds the balance of power. So I want to get your estimation, not the three of them. We know the three of them, what they say. I want your estimation of who you think the real winner is. I think there were two winners. I think it was the Liberals and the Green Party. And I thought the losers were clearly the NDP. Why do you say? I say that because you've got a party that's been in power now, what, for 15, 16 yep. years, whatever. After a party has been in power that long, there's usually, you have what's called a change election. And, you know, this is the second time that the NDP, I felt, entered the race ahead. Last time they were really far ahead. Yes. And both times they didn't pull it off. So the, other, the other reason I think the, uh, the NDP lost is because, uh, because there's so many outstanding ballots still to be counted, 176,000. In the one riding which the NDP won by just nine votes, I expect that riding is going to flip to the Liberals. In which case, they'll get their majority then? They'll get their majority, however, if they select the Speaker, then it's not quite there. Mm -hmm. And when you have, and, and here's another reason that I think the Liberals have greater potential here. Although I wouldn't be surprised if we have another election within a year, as we did in 1953. You mentioned 1952. I can talk about that. Uh, the Liberals could reach out both to the NDP backbench and to uh, the Green Party and try to pick off one or two people. So poaching is not an unknown thing at this point. No, it's quite common. In fact, that's how Roy Romano built a majority in in Saskatchewan and Ed Schreier in Manitoba. But that's in some respects, that, that, those were formal, like Romano's was a coalition government. He had liberals come and sit in his NDP government as liberals. Do you see the potential for Greens being invited to join a coalition government here? I doubt that they would because uh, the wind is in their sails. But in the Romano case that you cite, uh, when you say it was a formal coalition, the reality is that the extra-parliamentary Liberal Party, in other words, those that weren't elected, but the president and the executive, they denounced what the Liberals did. Moreover, the Liberal leader ended up running as an NDP -er in the subsequent election. That's different than a traditional coalition. And it was only 3C. I mean, they call it a coalition, but yeah. it was, frankly, it was three portfolios yeah. that the Liberals got that time. Okay, let's try to understand a little better about why you know, despite the fact that the Liberals had been there for 16 years, Christy Clark did manage to hang on. She may get her majority government just yet. But they certainly knocked her down a peg, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, how come? Well, they, they were in power for a long time. I think a major issue, which really turned a lot of people off, were the revelations that came out about, um, and the New York Times used the phrase, the Wild West of party finance. 
And it was- they got no rules out there. It, they have rules about spending during the campaign. But not about how much you can raise. Exactly. And, and here's another advantage Liberals could have, although I don't think it would work out if you did have an election in the next year or 18 months. The Liberal coffers are overflowing. Mm. I don't think the NDP or the Green Party has that much money. On the other hand, my observation is that money doesn't buy it necessarily buy elections. Uh, the way you come across in the media, you need a, a certain amount of money, but that isn't what decides. If money bought elections, Stephen Harper would still be in power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've, I mean, obviously your best before date makes a big difference as yeah. well. Uh, I want to get a better sense from you as well about what the Greens do in the event that it is a minority government. Yes. Uh, because obviously he's holding the balance of power, Andrew Weaver, and he'll have a number of options. Do you want to lay out what his potential options are? Well, first let me say what surprised me about what he said on election night or the clips I heard. Uh, I thought he would... Uh, talk first and foremost about the environment being his priority, but he said no. He didn't say he didn't say no to the environment. But what he talked about was changing the election finance laws. And he talked money and talked about electoral mm. reform. Mm. And I thought, oh well, those can easily be accommodated. And uh, uh, electoral reform would be tricky for the uh, liberals, and I think it would actually hurt the NDP more. Although the NDP have been partisans of it all along. Let me pick up on the NDP angle here. And, and to do that, let's go back 32 years to the province of Ontario. Okay. And you can remember that election where the party that actually got the most votes came second. The party got second most votes came first. Um, so again, we had sort of a tie situation. And the NDP had the balance of power. This was Bob Ray. And he decided to back the second place party, David right. Peterson, right. and made Peterson the, the premier. Do you see any scenario here where if it's a minority, the Greens decide to defeat Christy Clark, back the NDP, and put the second place par party into power? It's possible. I just think that um, Clark holds, is in much better position. The Liberals are just much better positioned. First off, they're in government and they can use that, plus I think uh, on balance, the, the absentee ballots are going to help the Liberals. They may not get most of the absentee ballots, but I think they will uh, win them in at least that one riding. So it is possible. A, a, a difference in 1985 is the Liberals, uh, the Conservatives have been in power for 42 years. They had been, yes. And uh, clearly, uh, there was an appetite for change in the province. So although Bob Ray and the uh, NDP said, well, they're negotiating with both, you know, you knew that it wasn't going to happen with the Conservatives. And uh, it, what, what's happened, what happened in Ontario and is happening in, in British Columbia and in all our provinces is, is the cities are becoming more important. And the rural areas, which tend to vote for more conservative parties, like Christy Clark's, are becoming less important. Hmm. So there were gains for the NDP in parts of Vancouver. Where they got hurt was that the, the Greens took away two of their traditional seats on the island. Mm -hmm. So that was devastating. Had they gotten no seats? I, I, think, I think the Greens also took votes from the Liberals. I don't think there's any way of knowing exactly. Let's understand this, though. If it's a majority government at the end of the day, even if by only one seat, yeah. are the Greens at that point not players anymore? No, I think they are players. I mean, we had um, elections, I don't know if it was in the 90s, where the Greens did fairly well in one election. I think they got around 10%. And what struck me was that in the subsequent election, their vote actually went down. Hmm. Uh, but this time there was a difference because they did win one seat last time. And uh, when you start getting 16, 17% of the vote, people start thinking, well, no, it's, it's not a passing flash. So I think that they have potential. It'll also depend on how they come across uh, in the legislature and the positions that they take. I mean, I think there will be a lot of green uh, voters who will be upset that, um, that Weaver is considering giving the Liberals the time of day. <laughs> well, and again, if it turns out to be a minority government, and you know, we're we waiting for all know. the votes that we don't know, does that mean that 
If it's a liberal minority government, that means there's more votes in the legislature against pipelines than for them. So does yes. that mean all those deals are dead? No, no, it's not necessarily dead because um, pipeline and the decision, we're, if we're talking about Trans Mountain, there are other pipelines mm -hmm. in BC, that's already been approved by the federal cabinet. And it's really something under federal jurisdiction. Uh, the province can make noise, and we can have court cases, and it could be held up, but at the end of the day, and, and you never know how courts are going to rule, I think uh, the feds would win out on that. I, I think this is right. 57% of those eligible cast ballots in this election. 57%. What do you make of that? Well, that's interesting. I saw data that said that's what the percentage was that voted in 2013. I hadn't seen that 57% percent cast ballots here. So that's sort of stasis. It hasn't changed. Voter turnout has turned, uh, has turned down across the country in the last uh, 20, 30 years. A big change, however, was in our last federal election. We had the biggest increase in voter turnout between any two elections since Confederation. That was unusual. We went from around 61 to around 69. So. Um, you know, we can speculate on the, the reasons that this has happened, but it's not unusual. I don't think uh, the voter turnout, hey, what, how about in Ontario? I think we've had less than 50% <laughs> at times or, or very close I, to 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's right. Uh, let's show this, Sheldon. Um, this is the uh, National Post. There we go. National Post, the headline says, Christy Clark's narrow win is a sign that Canada's turning into a protectionist trade warrior. Is that how you inferred the results of the election? Not at all. In fact, I read that whole story and I concluded this is garbage journalism. <laughs> it's an attempt to sensationalize to, and it misleads. Uh, Don't get a suit here, okay? What are you trying to say? Well, you know, he's, point, he's making it sound like Christy Clark can keep uh, thermal coal from the United States from being exported. Well, that's what she threatened to do during the campaign. Well, she can threaten it all she wants. She can't control that. That's under federal jurisdiction. Moreover, I don't think she uh, she really wants to do that. And I don't think that would help, as she probably knows, help Canada in terms of its dealings with the United States. Well, you are right. She can't unilaterally do that. And what she, I mean, technically what she did during the campaign was to ask the prime minister That's of the right. country if he would do it on yeah. her behalf. And he didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He just sort of took it under advisement. And he said he was seriously considering it. Right. And I don't believe for one instant that he's seriously considering it. So what was he doing there? Well, because you're, he, uh, the, the federal liberals wanted the provincial liberals to win because of their own pipeline agenda. And, and so he, he can't uh, dismiss Christy Clark because it looks like he's weighing in directly running against her. So the easiest thing to say is I'm seriously considering it. You know, I'd like uh, now the media to ask Trudeau when this is going to get serious consideration. I don't think you're going to get much of a response. Okay. Professor, in our last minute here, tell us, as you look forward now, what you think the issues are that are going to define the next 6 to 12 months as this parliament kind of figures out what it wants to do. I don't know. I, I think we will have uh, some action on the things Weaver wants. Uh, uh, election finance on um, on electoral reform I think the liberals will stall but uh, it'll appear that there's something going on and the one thing I would say about what's going to happen in the next six to twelve months is no it, the way politics works is things pop out of the sky that nobody <laughs> anticipated six or eight twelve months before events. and you have to deal with it. events dear boy events yeah. right the great line okay thanks a lot for this crazy election eh? Yeah, it was fun. You, <laughs> fun for you. You were running. That's Nelson Wiseman, professor, University of Toronto from the Department of Political Science. Great to see you again. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.